Okay, so today we're going to be looking at another one of the sprites that you've submitted. Today is going to be this idle boxer animation which Enzo sent in. So thank you to Enzo. Now I really liked what he sent in as a base. I, I quite liked what he's done so far. The sprite, the movement. He's done an interesting thing with outlines, I noticed. That kind of caught my eye where he doesn't have the traditional, yep, yeah, let's just surround the whole sprite with a black line, but let's let's leave some of the parts out. Let's just leave them hanging. That, that kind of piqued my curiosity, so, so yeah, I thought it would be interesting to have a look at this one. Idle animations are pretty much something that everyone's going to do at some point. Yeah, it's one of the most common character animations you're going to make, and so I think it might be interesting to go over the one that he's already sent and see what kind of improvements we can make, what adjustments we can do. Okay, so here we go. So the very first thing I noticed was that he added a loop, or he made the animation loop by using a ping pong effect in a sprite. This can work as a quite an easy way to make an animation loop. Now the downside with this is that it can sometimes make the loop look like one of those old Instagram boomerangs. I think that's what they're called. It doesn't feel as natural as it could. And so I generally tend to avoid using that effect. And as a starter, I, I sort of replicated the ping pong effect, but without actually using that feature. So I, I took it from being eight frames, seven frames, and then I made it 14. It's still using the same frames and it will still look the same, but now I just have something where I can change frame 12 and it won't affect frame three, and I can end up making the loop feel um, smoother. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to do was add some more horizontal movement to the body. Right now the character's kind of going straight up, straight down, straight up, straight down, and I think to make it feel a little bit more loose, we can make him move a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right as he's going up and down. So rather than his head and his body moving in a straight vertical line, we can make it seem more like a figure of eight, which we'll soon see a bit later. Now I do this a lot, a lot of idle animations, same with walk animations, I think this gives it a bit a bit more fluidity, a bit more liveliness. Once you start introducing those arcs and those curves to the movements, so it isn't very rigid and um, linear, sort of straight up, straight down, or straight left, straight left, right. But when you add these more circular movements into the body, I think it helps with the overall movements. That's my experience. And so that's gonna be one of the primary goals for this animation. It's like, okay, where are things moving straight up, straight down? Where are things not moving in that naturally flowy way? Where can we introduce curves? Where can we introduce arcs? And that's for the most part what I've done with this animation and what we'll continue to see through this recording. Like even though I've cut out 90% of the times where I'm just staring at the animation looping, in the times you can see me just watching the animation, what I'm essentially doing is trying to see those arcs. I'm trying to watch the movements of the individual parts of the body. Are they following a curves or are they doing these weird jagged movements which make it seem uncomfortable? So all these different moments where I'm sort of grabbing parts of the body and I'm moving them around. So for instance, you know, I've been moving the body up, I've been moving the head to the right and to the left, same with the hands, and then eventually you'll see with the legs as well. I'm just trying to get them all to fall into this curve, to fall into this imaginary line that I'm seeing in my head. Now sometimes, before, I would draw this line, like I would create another layer, and then I'd draw the line on top just so I can kind of see you know, is the body, are parts of the body in line with this line? And then later I'd just delete it. But now I think I've gotten to the point where I've, I've sort of done it enough times I can just do it without drawing the line. You can kind of just imagine it and watch. Like if you just replay the animation, you can say, okay, is it following this line I'm seeing on my head? No. Okay, where is it not following that imaginary line? Oh look, frame eight. So we go to frame eight and we move whatever needs to be moved so that it's then following that line. I then also went and made the blink animation happen less frequently and less intensely. So it was only just one frame per loop, whereas before it was blinking twice per loop. I found that when he was blinking too much it was a bit distracting. So when he was blinking every time he jumped from left to right, it's like jump to the left blink, jump to the right blink, I think that just made it seem a bit excessive. So I've limited down a bit. It's not a major thing, but I thought that kind of helps. Now I was contemplating whether to add squash and stretch to this, um, I'm a big fan of squash and stretch, I tend to add it wherever, wherever I can. In this case I wanted to add it to when he was landing, so when he was jumping from left to right, as his foot hits the ground we add a bit of squash and stretch. Now if you don't know what squash and stretch is, it's basically, well it's what the name suggests. We squash him a bit and at the same time we stretch him, so we make him shorter but then we make him wider. and 
if when you do that for a frame or two it's kind of a good way to make something feel a bit more bouncy and I was thinking right I mean this guy's kind of a bulky guy he's quite heavy he's a boxer he's supposed to be a you know, tough guy so maybe if we add squash and stretch it will take away from that and despite all that I, I went with it anyways I added a bit of squash and stretch because apparently I'm an addict but I made sure to keep it as subtle as possible I didn't go to the extreme I didn't I didn't squish him like eight pixels I only did it one so I'd move him down one and I'd stretch him out to the sides one pixel per side so I kept it minimal and, and I liked how it looked after I did that so I don't think it ruined the overall appearance too much but I would be interested to hear some thoughts on that decision maybe I'm wrong there maybe I'm not and then the final touches as I mentioned earlier was just to introduce those curves to the legs Right, make sure the legs are following some kind of arc, uh, that their movement isn't jagged. But then that was it. Here's a side by side. Simple things, nothing extreme. I kept the overall movement, it was just tiny adjustments, tiny little things I'd change. Because the overall frames, the overall poses, I was quite happy with. I didn't really want to change that much. And even if I did want to change them that much, the lack of layers made it very difficult. <laughs> right, the A sprite file was just one layer. and that can make it very difficult if you want to change up individual pieces of the animation. Like if I wanted to change the left hand, then that would require having to redraw all the body and the heads on all the frames, which wouldn't be particularly fun. And so as I say, I've just kept most things as they were, but introduced some small tweaks. But let me know your thoughts. Maybe I've totally butchered this one. Maybe I've made it a bit too bouncy, a bit too groovy to the point that it looks more like a dance than it does a guy trying to box, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you to Enzo for sending in his work. If you want to send in your work and have me do stuff on it, whether it's completely butcher it or make it better, then you can send in your sprites, preferably an A sprite file if you have one. Uh, I have an email in the description which you can send it to, and I might work on them in a future video. Right now there are currently quite a few bits of work in my inbox, so it might take a little while to get round to whatever you send in. At the same time, if you just have work you'd like to show off, that would be fine too. I've seen some things be sent in which I just don't actually want to change. Like, there's not really much I, I can add to it. And so I'll probably just show them off in a video. I might just be like, here, this is something someone sent in. Look how nice it is. But anyways, that's it from me for today, so I will speak to you later.